So then today it was announced that Daryl Clark has been appointed as new manager of Cheltenham Town following the parting of ways with previous head coach Wade Elliott. Of course, the whole process of bringing in this new manager seemed to be kept very on the low by the club, which I do rate, to be honest. A lot of speculation and gave us fans a lot of mystery behind this appointment. Of course, we only had the odds to go off of and they seemed to be very, very inaccurate, it's fair to say. You look at some of the names that were mentioned on that odds list and it's absolutely tragic. Of course, Scott Brown was one of the names heavily mentioned when it came to odds, but he was never in the manager race, according to journalist John Palmer. In fact, Daryl Clark's name wasn't actually solidly mentioned throughout the whole thing. Of course, he was a man that fans wanted in, but there was never any concrete evidence behind him potentially coming to the club or even being interviewed or in the process of being sought after by the club. The only name that we were strongly aware of was Dave Artell, of course, purely because he did come and watch our game against Stevenage last Saturday. But that was the only one where we had any concrete evidence to go off of. But he's here, he's perfect, and we're going to be talking all about his career up till now, the struggles on and off the pitch which he has experienced, and of course what he will bring to this lacklustre chant squad as of right now. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on this appointment down in the comments. I'm sure they'll all be positive because he is a fantastic manager and I think definitely the right man for us. But let me know what you think. Of course, in his career up till now, Daryl Clark has managed four sides. Of course, Salisbury City, where he did end his playing career, Bristol Rovers, Walsall, and most recently, Port Vale. The most notable, probably, of those four is his spell at the gas, Bristol Rovers, back-to-back -back promotions, National League to League 2, and then League 2 to League 1. Unbelievable. Of course, he was relegated with the gas to the National League on goal difference, which was absolutely gut-wrenching for them, but managed to bounce straight back amid claims from the fans that maybe he should go following their relegation. He got them into the playoffs, got them to Wembley, and then ended up winning 5-3 in a penalty shootout to get back into the Football League. Incredible stuff. One thing I like about Daryl Clark is his honesty with the media and the fans, and I think at times maybe we've lacked a bit of transparency when it comes to comments made about performances he came straight out after that playoff final and said Grimsby were the better side we probably didn't deserve it on the pattern of play however we got a bit of luck and we'll take that and that's all that matters the result is what matters and we are back in the football league and we're buzzing and that is what you want to see not necessarily that much honesty but just a bit more transparency with the fans and not kidding ourselves when it comes to bad performances I want a manager that is going to hold their hands up and admit it's a bad performance. And I think we've definitely got that in Daryl Clark. Of course, then following his promotion back to League 2, he then took them to third place finish in League 2 to get them promoted to League 1, causing absolute scenes at the man. A pitch invasion, and you just look at the photos of him. He's absolutely buzzing. He shows passion. And that successive promotion got the interest of several big clubs in his name and really established himself as a solid manager at the level of the lower ends of the Football League and League One. Absolutely brilliant to see. And of course, recently he then went on to Warsaw for a couple of seasons. And then, of course, most recently, Port Vale. Now, at Vale Park, he had some very good times and some tough times. Of course, he did take them into League One via the playoffs once again. That man just loves a trip to Wembley, doesn't he? Will he take us to Wembley in the Papa John's Trophy? We missed out last season. I don't think we will after losing 4-1 to Bristol Rovers, but you never know. But of course, there they beat Mansfield convincingly as well with a fantastic performance. And once again, another win at Wembley under his belt, another promotion under his belt. And then, of course, taking them into League One last season, struggles on and off the pitch. I mean... He ended up going for more reasons off the pitch than on. Obviously, as a human being, no one should ever, ever have to go through what that man went through when it came to family issues. I'm not going to talk all about it in this video because I don't think it's right to. Um, but those that know will completely agree that it's impossible for you to carry on with performing to the best of your abilities in any area of work, especially with the pressure of football when things like that are going on in your personal life. So ultimately, I think that disappointing ending to his spell at Port Vale needs to be taken with a pinch of salt because if I'm being perfectly honest, I think it's impossible for a manager of any calibre to go through those sort of issues and still perform to the best of their ability and carry on with the same positive attitude. 
Of course, that did lead to him taking a fairly prolonged break from football. Is he ready? I hope so. It seems so because he has been appointed by Chan and he has agreed to come to us, which absolutely amazes me, to be honest, that we've managed to get a name like him in. I thought it was reasonable. I thought it was doable. But did I think our board would pull it off? I did not. And to be fair, they have got criticism so far this season, but they have pulled this one out of the bag, and I take my hat off to them. Not literally, because I've been wearing this for about half an hour while trying to record this, and my hat hair is horrendous. But they have got this absolutely on the money, of course. At Port Vale, played a very 3-5-2 kind of style of football, which is what we have recruited for, maybe bar a couple of players. But... It's a brilliant appointment. He suits our style of play, but he does like to vary things as well, which I think is good because we've tried to do that recently and at times it's worked, at times it hasn't, but this guy has experience. We're talking about a man who's been to three football league clubs and excelled at all of them. Wade Elliott, he tried it. It worked at times. It didn't at others. He's been a very good coach so far in his career. Of course, under Michael Duff here, did a very, very good job. However, as a head coach, of course, had struggles last season, kept us up. And then this season, he started to switch things up and it just didn't really work. And I feel like that's the difference in experience when you've got that and lack of. It's, it's huge for me. And that's why I think it was massive that we bought in experience. I spoke about this on the podcast, of course. What I will do on this video is I will link the recent uh, Robin's Report podcast. I do feature on that, of course. Many of you guys will know already. Um, I said, and we all said, experience is vital now. Nine games into a season... No goals scored, zero wins, one point on the road at Pompey. Arguably, with the chances we had, could have and maybe should have won that game. No goals in nine games is absolutely outrageous. And, you know, the, the, to turn this around, it's going to take someone with experience. You can't bring in, I don't know, an England under-21s assistant coach or an assistant coach from one of these other academy clubs or whatever. You have to bring in a man who has done the rounds in the leagues and had success while doing it, and that is exactly what we've done. I think one thing that has to be given for him is time. Of course, he comes into an absolute mess that was left for him. It is a bit of a free hit for him in his career because, of course, we've had a horrendous start. No one is expecting us to stay up, even after a quality appointment such as Daryl Clark for a club like us. But we have to give him time because, of course, he has come back, like I say, from horrendous circumstances off the pitch. Is he ready? He might take time to bed back in. I hope he is. And I hope he can get back to where he was, if not better, and use that as motivation. And I think that would be absolutely beautiful for football if that happened. Not only us, because, of course, he has been absolutely through some horrendous things. But enough of that talk. I'm just absolutely buzzing with this. And he is a man that is going to bring in the style of football that we want to see from the quality of players that we have. We know as Charlton fans that we do have some quality players in this team. A lot of people I've seen on Twitter saying that this is the worst team we've ever had. I, I completely respect opinions. I think there is a lot of... Not necessarily dead weight, but players that definitely aren't good enough for the level in this team. But we do have some absolutely fantastic players that are not having their potential unlocked and maybe aren't playing to the best of their abilities purely due to the way that we are set up and the way that we are playing as a whole. And Daryl Clark is certainly the man to bring that to us. He loves playing high-speed, free-flowing attacking football, passing throughout the midfield, passing from defence to midfield to attack. He likes playing with two strikers, which works for us, of course, having a hold-up striker and then a player like Aidan Keener who will hopefully come back into form under this man. But to be honest, I just can't wait for the next few games to see him in action and see him implement his style of football onto this team. And I certainly think he is the right man to hopefully turn around our fortunes and keep us in this league. Please. Honestly, that would be absolutely amazing after the start we've had. But I think that does conclude this video. Like I say, comment down below your thoughts. I don't want to waffle too much. So I hope you have enjoyed and I hope you found this informative and you learned maybe a little bit more about his career if you didn't know anything already. Or you've just listened to me waffle. I do appreciate you watching. But once again, thank you all very much for watching. Have a class rest of your day and I will see you for Lincoln Away.